Our story today takes place in Riverside, California, where the next time you order a bowl of chili, you might want to check what kind of meat is in it. On October 30th, 1986, a man scavenging for aluminium cans made a terrifying discovery. In a drainage ditch, he discovered the partially clothed remains of 23-year-old Michelle Yvette Gutierrez, a local prostitute. An autopsy revealed that Miss Gutierrez had strangulation marks around her neck. But things took an even more chilling turn when it was revealed that Miss Gutierrez also had trauma to the anal and genital regions, as well as having pubic hair ripped out from the genital region. Investigators didn't know it at the time, but this was the first in a long line of brazen prostitute murders that would rock Riverside from the mid-80s to the early 90s, with the culprit ultimately being a mild-mannered county employee who no one expected. William Suff was born August 20th, 1950 in Torrance, California. The oldest of five children, Suff would later, at the age of 16, have to take on more responsibility by taking jobs to support the family once his father left and walked out on them. Suff was seen as a model student. He worked hard, got good grades, and played the trumpet in the marching band at school. It was during one of these marching band performances that Suff met his first wife, Terrell. After high school, Suff joined the Air Force, but kept in touch with Terrell and, a year later, proposed to her. Terrell declined the proposal as she thought she was too damaged and not good enough. She had recently been raped and become pregnant after the crime. Suff told Terrell he didn't care and shortly after she agreed to marry him. Even though he accepted Terrell, he did not accept the child. Suff, who was now stationed in Texas, lied to his future wife and told her that children were not allowed on the base. This caused his wife Terrell to leave her baby with her mother while she moved out to the base in Texas. As soon as Terrell moved out to be with Suff in Texas, his attitude and demeanor changed entirely. He became physically and emotionally abusive, trying to control every aspect of Terrell's life. A couple of months after Suff's discharge from the military in 1970, the couple had their first child. As Suff drifted from his job, his anger rose. Terrell was now the sole financial provider for the family, therefore becoming the breadwinner, a position Suff greatly loathed as he thought women should be the caretakers and men the sole breadwinners for the family. These issues only compounded in 1973 when the couple had their second child. Inside the house, things had become an abusive nightmare, but outside, no one was the wiser. Suff had perfected the art of keeping keeping his evil side away from everyone. Suff's perfect little life facade was broken on September 25th, 1973, when his now two-year-old daughter was killed. The child was found with broken bones, cigarette burns, and a ruptured liver. Injuries Suff claimed came from her brother hugging her too hard. Police didn't buy the story for a second, and both he and his wife were convicted of the murder and sentenced to 70 years in prison. Suff's wife's conviction was later overturned due to insufficient evidence, but Suff's conviction was upheld. As soon as she was out of prison, Terrell immediately divorced Suff. While in prison, Suff again played the nice guy card and was even seen as a model prisoner. Even though convicted of a 70-year sentence, Suff only served 10 and was let out in 1984. Unfortunately, if Suff had done more time, there would be more women still alive today. Two months after the death of Michelle Yvette Gutierrez, there was another gruesome discovery when another local prostitute, Charlotte Palmer, was found half-clothed on the side of the highway, her body mutilated and her breast removed. The removal of the victim's breast would become a sort of calling card for Suff. Psychiatrists would later say that Suff's mutilation was as a result of his disdain for their profession. The woman's breast is seen as a life-giving, nurturing organ. 
Suf didn't think that these women deserved their breast because they did not deserve their profession. By removing the breast, Suf was saying that he believed his victims did not deserve to be women, that he believed they were not worthy because of their profession. While Suf spent his nights perusing the red light district looking for prostitutes, during the day he was seen as a great cook and even a model citizen. In fact, during one of his shifts, Suf actually delivered supplies to the police station that was investigating the murders he was committing. Suf was so well liked and respected at his job that he became the poster boy for a new government venture. In order to conserve energy and alleviate traffic, the county came up with a rideshare program. A program in which William Suff was the poster boy and even appeared in advertisements saying, take a ride with Bill, in which he was seen standing next to his van. The very same van he used to pick up his victims before murdering them. As Suff continued to get away with his crimes, his murders became more and more brazen. On January 17, 1989, Linda Ruiz was found dead on a beach about 100 feet from the water. She was found with a blood alcohol level of 0.19 and had been suffocated. Suff had held her head in the sand until she was killed. Police got their biggest break when Suff attempted to pick up sex worker Kelly Whitecloud. After buying dinner for the young woman, an argument broke out and Whitecloud was able to escape from the van. Suff then left and picked up Kelly Hammond, another sex worker, and Whitecloud saw Hammond get into Suff's van. Kelly Hammond's body was found just a short while later by a trucker. But this time around, they had a witness in White Cloud that could not only give a description of Suff, but also his van. Even with the description, Suff continued to kill, murdering Eleanor Caesars in broad daylight, then dumping her body in an orange grove just one street away from Riverside Police Station. With so many murders, police were finally able to start piecing things together. Suff's van had left distinct tire marks at several murder scenes, and police were finally able to stop putting those clues to the forensic team to try and find a match. Suff's shoe prints were also found which helped narrow the search. Armed with all this information, the police launched a week-long investigation, with strict instructions to stop anyone who picks up a sex worker matching Suff's description. On January 9th, 1992, the sting paid off as an officer stopped Suff after he made an illegal left turn. Upon stopping Suff, the officer noticed what appeared to be a bloody knife along with other potential killing materials. The officer then checked the tires, which matched the forensic report for each tire tread. William Suff was arrested and the police were granted a warrant to search his home, where the most damning evidence was found. A pair of shoes that matched prints left at multiple sites. Carpet fibers from his apartment matched fibers found on multiple victims and cat hair was found on several victims that matched Suff's cat. With Suff in custody, DNA evidence was now also matched directly to the scene. Suff stood trial on 13 counts of murder on March 25th, 1995, for which he pleaded not guilty. The prosecution presented their case and even alleged that Suff cucked some of his victims in his famous... Subscribe for more.